Some of you may already be familiar with this work. Eine kleine Gig or A Little Jig is an abstract work from Mozart, probably written after he encountered the works of Bach and Heindel. When I first heard it, I thought I was listening to a work written by Prokofiev or something else in that genre. It really has this modernistic feel and vibe to it, yet the root of the composition is still counterpoint. The composition features some cool techniques that are interesting for the students willing to expand their musical vocabulary. Also, the work has a comprehensible structure and is not too long, which suits the video educational format very well. Let's start by listening to this little jam. A big thank you to Steven Malinowski for letting me use his recording. You will find some links to his YouTube channel below. The structure in this work is in binary form with a repeated A and B section. I will indicate the section on top of the grey bar. After the recording, we dissect some of the features and ideas that Mozart used in this composition. As you might have noticed, Mozart used ideas from the fugue. A subject is presented in a certain tonality and is then stated in other registers and possibly other tonalities. Let's take a look at the subject. It encompasses two measures and starts on a pickup measure with the note D. The composition is in G major and so is the first subject. The staccato achieves a funny character and the appoggiatura makes the subject even more funkier. Notice that the second appoggiatura is on the first beat instead. Mozart is already using some rhythmic wizardry and fooling our minds. The harmony goes from tonic to dominant into a secondary dominant E of the second scale degree A. So the abbagiatura note F is actually not part of the harmony and moves to E. After the presentation of the subject, Mozart immediately introduces the subject again, this time in the dominant tonality of D. Thus a tonal answer a fourth lower. Notice that the subject is now in the alto register. Mozart adds a soprano voice that suits his subject. This new soprano line copies the staccata and the appoggiatura character. The subject is again completed in two measures. In measure 5, Mozart states the original subject an octave lower in the tenor register. We now have three voices and gradually more and more chromaticism starts to creep in. The exposition is now complete as Mozart has presented the subject in its different registers, just as in a traditional fugue. He quickly modulates to C major and starts to use another rhythmical ambiguity, syncopations. The syncopated line moves diatonically from G to D. This is then more or less copied in the left hand in a more arpeggio-like fashion. The harmony shifts to D major as we reach the last measure of the slide. Mozart breaks the shifted rhythm and now states the dominant subject in the highest register. However, this time the subject is truncated and only one measure long. This shortened subject is now imitated one octave lower. Also notice that we now have only one appoggiatura in the middle of each measure, which gives a more steady rhythm. With this imitation comes the introduction of a new device in the highest voice, a pedal note on A. We can view A as the dominant of D 
and D itself is the dominant of our home key G major. When Mozart gives a third imitation of the short note subject in the tenor voice, he states it in D minor instead of D major. Notice that the F sharp is replaced by an F natural. Take a look at the exotic harmonic sequence. He moves from D minor to A dominant, F sharp diminished, G minor, E flat major, A dominant, B minor, and then in the last measure of the A section, a perfect authentic cadence. The B section begins again with the fragmented subject in D major, yet in the tenor register. The same idea of imitation is used again, but take a closer look at this imitation. It is inverted. I will indicate this inverted subject in orange. The only part that is not inverted is the appoggiatura. With this imitation comes a new modulation to E minor. The appoggiatura is still omnipresent. Now comes the most glorious part of the composition, in which the rhythm is completely altered from 6 8 notes to 4 groups of 4 8 notes. You immediately feel this weird rhythm shift, but Mozart makes it harmonically comprehensible by moving in circle fifths. C sharp, F sharp, B, E, A, D, G, and finally C. You can keep track of the harmony by looking at the chromatic resolutions of the appoggiaturas. This device of rhythm shifting is called a hemiola and is often used in the codas of baroque works, not in the middle of the composition as for this case. Often such a hemiola is more nuanced. Back to the regular rhythm says Mozart and he then introduces the full subject in the G minor tonality instead of the major tonality. The tail of the subject is slightly altered. In the bass he gives a pedal point on D, the dominant. The pedal point is held for four measures and is then relocated to the soprano voice. We now have a major followed by a minor imitation of the subject, again in fragments. There is a brief modulation to A flat major after the pedal point ends. He then quickly modulates back to the home key and starts a pedal point on G in octaves. This is the short coda. Notice the rapid successions of appoggiaturas and its exotic harmony. Also notice this high soprano line moving diatonically from D to G. Now all voices start to come together in octaves and finish in a perfect authentic cadence. Well, thank you for following along. Maybe you've learned something from it, or it even got you inspired to write something in the same manner. Anyway, feel free to leave a comment and subscribe. I'm also on Patreon, where you can support me as a composer. I will leave a link in the description.